potatoes that we have dry canned out of the canner while we start another batch. Guys, y'all come with us on our journey today. So we have our lifter, and we're going to take them out of the canner and put them on that towel, carefully. I've already heard pinging sounds. I am quite happy. So those are sealing perfectly and we will check these after they've cooled down just to make sure. Uh, in the meantime we're going to go ahead and start another batch. So as you saw I have already been washing the potatoes. We've already been washing them. So now we're going to start dicing all these that we have washed. Yeah. All right. So we are ready to begin. I have my compost bucket for the peelings. I have a bowl of water for the potatoes as I dice them. I have my dicing knife and my peeling knife. Yeah, I could use a potato peeler, but I prefer a knife. I know that's weird, but it's just how it is. <laughs>
y'all can see that or not. Y'all see that spot on that potato right there? That spot is green. Y'all ever heard about green potatoes? It's a spot where sunlight hits the potato while it's growing and developing. That part is supposed to be a bad part of the potato. Let me show you. Do y'all see how the potato is green even there? So we are not going to use that spot at all. We are going to cut out that whole side of the potato and make sure that everything we have is good and white. Yep. And I just put that in my clean potatoes. <laughs> y'all. Alright. So next we've peeled them. So we're going to dice them now. Y'all can dice these in whatever size chunks you want. We will probably be roasting or frying or possibly mashing these potatoes when we use them. So we're going to chop ours into small pieces. I'm going to put this in water so they don't turn brown. The water also helps pull out some of the starch, which will help me have clear water if I chose to put them in water to can. Um, I'm actually going to do a dry canning method with these, meaning I'm going to put the potatoes in the jar, put the lid on it, and stick them in the canner. Uh, that's how this is going to go. There's not going to be no liquid added or anything. Um, now, a lot of people will add butter and stuff, but I'm not going to do that. Again, I'm thinking that I need to prepare them for whatever ways we use these mostly. And by that, that means that I will season when I cook them. Um, if I do mashed potatoes, then I'll add butter to the potatoes. Um, but for the most part, fried potatoes and roasted potatoes, we don't add butter to that. Um, we just spray the pan a little bit and carry on. So we are just going to put potatoes in the jar. We're going to pressure can them for 35 minutes at 11 pounds of pressure. Now this is pints we are doing because it's just me and my husband most of the time. And the pint is actually still going to be too many potatoes for just he and I. Now, whoops, guys, <laughs> I made french fries. I only cut half the potato. So let's dice up the other half. Now, a lot of people will rinse the potatoes three times. They'll soak them for 30 minutes, rinse them, soak them again, rinse them, and then soak them again and rinse them. Um, then they'll pat them dry and put them in the, the jars from there. Now, I am going to just let them soak for a long time um, and then rinse them all in one step uh, because, yes, you can do it that way as well. Um, whatever works best for you. And again, you know, I'm not putting water in here, so it really doesn't matter if it's going to turn my jar cloudy or not. Um, so I may not even let them soak long at all. I may just rinse them and put them in jars. Now my canner is a 7-quart canner. I got nine jars that were pints in it a moment ago. 
um, three of which were wide mouth. I could have gotten 10 pints in there if they were all regular pint jars. Um, if they were all wide mouth, then I could have gotten eight. Um, I mixed, so I have nine. I possibly could have stacked them, but I did not. We just did one single layer of nine pints. All right, I'm going to cut this last potato, and then we're going to rinse and let them drain. And then I'll show you putting them in the jars. We have rinsed these. We've put them in a colander. That way they will drain and then we will put them in jars. Alright, as you can see, my jars are full. So I'm going to go through and put the lids on them and the rings. Now, when you put these rings on, you finger tighten. You don't need to cinch these things down. All of my lids have been rinsed and washed as well. I did wipe down my, my lid, my um, jar openings. Um, forgot to show that, but I did do that. That way you have a good seal. So always make sure you wipe down the mouth of your jars. Alright, now we're going to go put them in the can. There is already in my canner, two quarts of water. The book says for seven quart counter to put two quarts of water in there. Um, so now we're going to set the jars in it. All my jars are in the canner. Put the lid on it. Let's 
seal it shut, and we're going to turn it on. Now, I'm going to leave it on high for now until I see steam coming out of it. Then I'll turn the eye down and put the um, jiggler thing on, and um, we will watch it build pressure from there. All right, we have steam, so we're going to put the jiggler on, and we're going to watch it build pressure. This has sealed, and now that is sealed, so it has no choice but to build pressure, and it should take and start building pressure pretty quick. There we go, sealed up. The gauge is starting to climb. We want it to go all the way up to here. That's where 10 is. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and start turning the heat down because we're almost at 10. Now I know my stove. I'm going all the way down to almost medium. And we are at 10 now. Now we start the timer for 30 minutes. And we want to keep it at 10, 11, something like that, but not lower than 10 for the next 30 minutes. All right, guys, it's been 30 minutes. So what do I do now? I just turned it off. That's all. I turn it off. Now, a lot of people want to push this button down and release the pressure. A lot of people want to lift this up and release the pressure. We're not doing any of that. I do not want to take a chance on causing my jars to siphon or anything like that. Um, that is an unsafe practice. Now, I... I am a bit of a rebel. I will not always do things the way that the book says to, but I'm not going to release pressure, okay? Um, that is one thing that I will draw the line on. I'm not going to release that pressure. It's supposed to be this pressure for this long for that reason, okay? So, we're going to let it release pressure naturally, and then we'll take the jars out like we did before. Um, guys, look here. Well, there we go. I still have that many more potatoes to do. Yay me. All right, guys, so we're going to go get some other things done, and we will catch up with you all later. All right, it is later. So I'm going through, and I'm touching all of these lids. And all of these lids have sealed, every one of them. So that's a good thing. And what do I mean? It means this is, it means this is down and there's no movement. There is no movement when you touch this. All right, let's take out the next batch. Always open that canner carefully because of steam. Um, you don't know what's going to happen as you open it, so just open it carefully. All right, here we go.
that is 18 pints of dry canned potatoes. As you can see, there is no water in that jar of potatoes. That is what dry can canned means. So, I am quite pleased. 18 cans. That'll be at least 18 meals for me and my husband. Uh, one of those will probably feed... Two of those will feed us three times. Let's put it that way. Because we don't really eat a ton of potatoes. We should. But when we do, there's always other things with it. So this is not a whole meal, in other words. But it will feed us one and a half times each. Alright, guys. That's it for this. See you on the next one.